One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like that. This is a like a, a dot notebook, and I think this really helps me. Just the personal note taking style that I like. I don't like lines and I don't like graph paper, but I do like dots. So it's like the in between of total freedom and confinement. <laughs> I do all of my roast log notes in here now. Um, I'll probably have like a nice little leather cover for this, but they're all going to be in this size, this style, this works for me and how small my hands are. I've been doing a couple of experiments. Should I do it on like a clipboard? Should I do it in my phone? Should I do it here? Should I do it there? And this is the best way for me. I will do all of my roaster notes here and my cupping notes so I can go and refer very quickly and see what's going on there when I interpret the data. On the first go, number one, I thought good acid, kind of hollow. And I know which one this is. I'm gonna call it right now, it's Brazil Ipe. And I went for like, um, to try to get the most nuance out of this coffee and see, because I typically would roast this medium, but on the cupping table, I wanted to, um, again, pull this, give this to Mike Perry as a light roast, which is kind of light. So like, um, I call it, it developed to 23% in this roast profile. Okay, number two, it was bright, berry, red, complex, light body. I don't know which one that is yet. Number three, it was really similar to that one, light body. The body in these was, the thing that jumped out to me most besides the berries. Um, so cool. Four, I like it a lot. I don't know what it is, I like it. <laughs> five, harsh. Immediately, I was like, something's wrong, yikes, number five. So yikes, I don't know what that is. Six, right here, solid acid, a little bit astringent on the finish, uh, bitter, um, dry, tannins, not the most pleasant. Seven, very good, sweet, acidic. I like this one a lot. So I liked seven and I like four. Two and three were really similar in a light body. Um, and that's, I don't typically personally go for light body coffees, but cool. So let's just see, okay? Let's check these out. I know this should be Brazil. Oh, it's the Guji. Wow. So I cupped the Guji um, two days ago. It's um, it's like six dollars a pound, so it's not the cheapest. Um, it's a natural too. Naturals are tough for me to roast. They're not the easiest because you have to go so gentle. Ah, okay. So this is Ecuador. This is my first attempt. This is the Ecuador that we carry here. I don't carry the Guji. It's just like a sample. Uh, Ecuador two attempt number two. Uh, Ecuador three. Oh, that was four that I liked it a lot. Yeah, definitely when I cupped Ecuador, my third attempt, my third time doing it. <laughs> Cause I was like, huh, can I, can I elongate this a little bit more? I'll show you that later. Um, I liked it then too. All right, number five, the one I didn't like. Harsh, something's wrong. Brazil, mm, yeah, okay. Well, I always didn't like Brazil, but people like it. Mm. Brazil. Interesting. Okay, Vietnam one, version one or attempt one. I liked it. I can roast Vietnam. I'm very confident in my ability to roast the Vietnam. It, it, it really responds to me. It, it has a lot of give. For all of my faults as a roaster, it can take it. <laughs> Vietnam, it's just like my husband. <laughs> For all my faults, my the Vietnam can take it. All right, very interesting. OK, 
Okay, so number one, that was our Guji. I'm still not, even with the enough time passing, um, I don't feel like I'm doing a good job there. Number two was the Ecuador, and I feel like that's great. I feel like I've roasted that pretty well, and even if I, if I'm not perfect at it, it will. It's such a good coffee, and this Ecuadorian is from. Um, I have a, di a direct uh, relationship with the farmers, um, and they're called Siempre Verde Farms. Um, they have such a clean, well sorted, highly graded green. When you look at it, it's so pretty. It's a lower elevation coffee, and and it has such good complexity um into like when you when you develop it to like city plus into the medium side even and you go a little bit more gently we'll talk about the the ecuador later as i'm as i'm learning to grow with it and and developing better skill with it um such a good coffee by itself really good coffee and a really good price price point too really affordable number five was the brazil <laughs> You know the Brazil is, it's older too, in stock. And a lot of people use this green as a um, component in blends because it's such a like a solid, kind of one note. It's a good base that you could build on and you could really put something like an Ecuador in there or the Vietnam in there and you can really like splash on top of it acidity. So for people who don't like really bright or light coffees, they go to Brazil or coffees like Brazil to work into blends. And so that's why I got it in the first place. One, it's super, super affordable. It's like $3 a pound when you get into the wholesale price. And then it just it just is a really good blend. Economically, it works out if you're a roaster, you know, because it's so affordable that you could work it into things and do different blends and do different experiments and really have fun with blends um, and reach more more people with your coffee because not not too many people are really into the bright bright acidic light body things they want to feel the coffee right they want to feel that body they want to they want to something a little bit more akin to the nostalgic coffees so that's why a lot of roasters and cafes will have brazil in their inventory i mean that's what i've learned and that's what i copied you know I was like, cool, I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow what you guys are doing because you're successful. Six was the Vietnam attempt one, Vietnam attempt two. Cool. So the one that I really loved is Vietnam. And uh, this was my second attempt. Charge at 375. First crack was at 948. It was rolling. There was a little uptick. This is super interesting. The one that I love the most, the curve is not pretty, right? If I would, if I were to show it to Rail, uh, Rail, Rail, um, I'd be like, but cup it, okay? <laughs> Taste it first, okay, before you judge. The Brazil's tasting better as it cooled down, not uh, so harsh. Yeah, Ecuador is really good coffee. <laughs> All right, I'm really happy right now because um. I know the Guji is supposed to give me blueberries. Africa equals blueberries <laughs> to me. In my mind always, Africa equals blueberries. I'm getting that now as it's cooled. Lauren from Mill City Roasters. Temperature, mass, flavor. I always have that in my mind and I and I will forget still. Mmm. Cool, I didn't I didn't fuck it up. <laughs> You just gotta give it time to off gas, give off some of that harshness. I was tasting all the harshness. So a, a fun little thing in, in cupping is that you may be really um, excited to go and cup your roast right away. You have to give ample time for certain coffees, I think, to off gas, to give off some of their harshness. And even here on the cupping table, just letting it cool and come down where you could taste what you can really taste and see what the coffee has to offer. So, and that's what we do, you know? We cup when it's really hot, okay. Uh, we cup when it's cooling, 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 cooling until it's really cool, till maybe even it's room temperature. And I'll leave this out. Every time I have a cupping day, I, will, I like to start in the morning. I like to not have anything to eat. 
Um, I have, I still have my coffee in the morning, but I won't eat breakfast or even, I won't eat until lunch because I really wanna keep my palate, my tasting utensil as neutral as possible. So I'll try in the morning, I'll keep this out, right? And I'll keep it out until right before I eat and maybe even after I eat, after I've had some time in between meals, I'll come back here and I'll, and I'll taste it. If it's still the same, cool. But if I get something different, I have the notebook, I write it down. 